Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Solway SW36 here and the experience that I've had so far since I got it. And also some of the things I've done to this printer to make it better. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so if you watched the last video of this printer, you might have seen that the bench sheet that we printed on it actually turned out very well and it's actually been consistent with that kind of quality overall. So if this printer has a strong point, it is that it prints great out of the box. But with that said, I did have a few issues and most of them were my own fault. So let me explain exactly what I mean. Alright, so here we are on top of the printer and here you can see the head here. And before I forget, I want to show you guys that I did reroute the wires from the fan. So instead of going on top of this rail here, it kind of goes up now, around, and then inside. So then that seems to work out pretty good there. And before I get to the main problem here that I had, let me go ahead and show you guys. I rerouted all those wires in the back. Hopefully you can see that there. So the wires used to go right next to the bed right here and they would scrape on the edge of the bed which eventually I think would have worn them out and maybe cause the short or something. So what I did was I loosened the extruder motor here and put the wires all behind it here. And so now they're nicely tucking away into the bottom so they're better protected and not going to get damage during the printing and believe it or not guys i mean that's pretty much it all i had to really do to this printer i mean it's pretty much ready to go and nothing really needs to be upgraded like the fan here the blower fan that blows on the part cooling is excellent or whatever it is and however it's blowing it's been doing an excellent job of cooling but to go back to the problem i had it was basically pretty simple what happened was i noticed that some of these pulleys were loose a little bit and so what i wanted to do is i wanted to kind of go over the whole machine and make sure it was nice and tight all the bolts either through assembly or just shipping or whatever this thing gets loosened up and it all you know all the bolts could get loose a little bit because most of this machine is made of acrylic things tend to you know shift and relieve pressure and things like that so i went ahead and decided to tighten everything up and as i did that it seemed that i threw the pulley system here off a little bit and after that i've been having weird issues with circles so here's the first benchy that we printed and so when we printed it i was very impressed and as you can see guys overall it's an excellent print but if you look at it up on the top here you can see that that circle the chimney is not completely a circle it's it's an oval a bit so i didn't really notice that but then once i went through the machine and i tightened everything up hopefully you can see that i made it even worse basically so it's, now it's like a huge oval then i realized i messed something up and that's when it took me forever to try to figure out what exactly i did and how to remedy this problem so me being new to 3d printing the only thing i knew was you know the normal axes you got the y axes the z axes and then the x axes but because this printer is all here on top moving around the bed just goes up and down x and y axes are all up here and that's fine to understand it simplistically but this machine here has a different kind of technology that at least i'm used to looking at and that is it has i'm not sure exactly what this would be called either a core xy or a h bot so i'm not exactly sure the difference between those two i still have to figure that out essentially we have one long belt that starts and ends right here on these two ends here so the belt goes around this pulley then comes around another pulley here goes around the motor and then goes through here and then goes around that motor and then comes all the way around this pulley and then back over here and then meets here so it's one long belt that goes through two motors that attaches to one head so that would be some pretty weird geometry math or whatever they use to make this thing work because the motors move in a very funny way if i move the head from corner to corner you can see that that motor right there will not move at all hopefully you can see that guys it's not moving at all even though the print head is moving So if I move it like this, it moves just normally. 
but just when I start making a corner move, it, it stops. And same thing for that side. If I go that way, it won't move. But obviously, if I go this way, it'll move. So the point here is, is that this kind of method of moving the head is very different from what I'm used to. And after a lot of trial and error, I realized that because there's one belt with a bunch of pulleys and both X and Y axes are dependent on each other, meaning that one can't work without the other, you know, it just, it, they both work together. So it's either they both work together or they don't. And that's exactly what's happening here is why we're not getting round circles. Unless we have all these pulleys completely perfectly aligned. And when I say aligned, I don't mean like uh, they have to be aligned correctly. The way this printer works is that no matter the offset of wherever the parts are, as long as they don't move from there, the printer will print the correct geometry. So what was happening, and I didn't realize this, but some of these rollers here were loose and they were wobbling just a little bit. And so by the time I got there, it took quite a few prints and headaches to try to figure out because I tried very many different things to come to the realization that I just had a, a loose pulley here. And so whenever this would move back and forth in some directions, the belt would get looser and tighter in different places, which will cause the ovalness of the prints. So here we have another example, which is another benchy, which I printed a bunch of benchies. I guess just because I love benchies and I know exactly what they're supposed to look like. But you can see how that looks terrible on the top. I mean, that is a, not a circle at all. You know, for something small and precision like this, you want it to be a circle. Or if you were going to make a wheel, you know, if it's a small wheel, you're going to see a problem with that wheel. It's not going to be round. So I wanted to fix this problem once and for all. And so the reason I'm talking about this so much, I want to emphasize on that the bottom line is that because this has one belt and it runs through the whole system, if anywhere in the system, as it goes back and forth, there is any kind of play, it will show up in the print and it will be oval. So if you're having oval problems, your problem is somewhere there is play in the belt system, in the tightening of the belt. Even though everything seems fine when you tighten it. What I found the best thing to do is take the belt off and check every component that has no give at all. It has to be super solid across the whole belt travel. So once you get that super solid, you get the right results. So here we have a benchy was printed after I figured out how to get my circles back. And as you can see, that's pretty much a perfect circle. You know, and that's exactly what I was looking for. You know, because we went from this to this. So, and here if we compare the very first one that I printed when I got the printer, you can see that's still not a perfect circle there. And that is, or at least a lot closer to a perfect circle. So hopefully you can see that. And so since we got all of our benches out here, let's go ahead and look at the print quality. So this is the print quality of the first one that I printed on the unbox video. And you can see that is an excellent print there. And it just was shocking out of the box how well it prints. So then I decided to print it in black, you know, because black really shows you the, you know, what the actual print looks like. And as you can see, this printer delivered very well. I mean, look at those walls there on that bench, you guys. That's pretty nice. I mean, we have not done any kind of upgrades to this thing. So then I went ahead and printed this yellow one, and it's probably a little harder to see, but you can see how nice that is also. This printer just delivers. Like, it just does a great job. So obviously it's a little hard to see on the yellow, but... If you notice guys, the overhangs are all amazing. So here we go to our benchmark benchy, which is the same red PLA that we use on all our benchmark testing. And you can see it did a phenomenal job here also. And you can see the overhangs there. I mean, that's pretty darn good. So after printing all these benchies, I wanted to test something because this printer here, it rides on linear rails here on, you know, the X and the Y axes here, as you can see, hopefully. And I know that linear rails are more accurate, you know, and you can push them to higher speeds. So I decided to push this little printer pretty hard. And that's where this benching comes in. So this benchy was printed at 100 millimeters per second, guys. This was ultra fast. Like the printer was moving like crazy and this is what it looks like look how accurate that is for her for the speed i mean that's pretty impressive like we still really have good walls and the structure is still good there's no weird stringing or anything too weird 
Now the only thing I notice is maybe a little bit more clumpiness here and there. But that has to do probably something with the speed. Because it does have to stop and then, you know, accelerate. And there on the top we can see we have a pretty much perfect circle. And here on the back guys, obviously, you know, you're not going to be able to read those letters very well. Because of the speed that they were printed at. The impressive part is that, you know, it yields a good result no matter what you throw at it. It's really, really nice to see that a printer of this size and of this price range can do such a great job on prints. All right, so I showed you the benchies that I printed there and the quality of what they look like, but I printed quite a few other things. So here's another item here. This is a toothpaste little mechanism that, you know, you put your toothpaste in there, your tube, whatever, and then you roll it. You know, and as you roll it, you know, it squeezes all of it out, which I thought it was pretty neat. So I decided to print that. And at the end here, you have like a little cap that goes on there. And so here I have two caps. And you can see, guys, whenever I was having the issue with the printer not printing circles, this is what kind of cap I printed. And you can see how that's pretty unacceptable overall. And here we have a acceptable one that will work. And it's brown practically. So this is when I was getting close to round. So it's not completely round yet, but it's very close. So this little cap just goes on here. And so when you want to turn it, you just push it that way and you can turn it. And when you're done, you push it in and you're locked again. A very cool little thing. I thought this was practical. I know the kids will enjoy this. So knowing how good this printer prints, I decided to print some 3D parts for printers. And here's a TL smoother holder and this printer just does a great job putting out a good print so here we have a bracket for the spool holder and this isn't black guys black really really shows it's you know lines and colors and you can see even being black hopefully you can see guys it's just an awesome print very nice and here we printed something more delicate which is a fan shroud also in black and it turned out very good so you can see there are reflections. We had supports obviously here a little bit. This is the bottom. Look how great that bottom is. And the walls here and the top. So it did an excellent job. And we had a bunch of supports on the inside, which all popped off really easy. So very good for detail. So I was doing very well and I decided what it would be like if this printer printed the Creality Dog that turns out so great everywhere. And here it is guys. And it looks awesome. And so because this is printed in silver PLA, you're going to you know, see a little bit more artifacts and stuff compared to the yellow dog I showed you on the Creality machine. But check out how nice it looks. Look at his back here. Very uniform. Now something did happen to his tail and I think that had something to do with the slicing because I think it didn't fit into this machine here and so it cut it off basically. But just looking at it overall, guys, it's awesome. And you can really tell, like, in the facial area here, it did a great job with overhangs and all the little details that the dog has. So you can see, guys, that the printer can do very nice prints. So after printing this little doggy, I wanted to print something a little bit more practical. And it was this wheel here that we printed. So this is for an RC car. And you can see there's little supports here. And it did a really good job at this, too. You can see here, hopefully, the reflection, how nice the finish is on this wheel on the top here. So this is kind of a, you know, demanding print because it st starts off separately and then they join up here. So there's something funny that happened right here a little bit, but I have a feeling that has to do something with the G-code or maybe the SD card was a bit corrupted or something because it almost looks like it was offset for whatever reason. But in any case, it still turned out and it looks pretty good. And so if you wanted to print something useful like this, you can definitely print on this printer here. So the next part I want to show you guys is a larger print that I made. And it is this statue looking Roman thing. He holds pencils here in the back. Now I did have to scale them down a little bit because of the height. Because this printer can only do 140. So this model here is probably about the 130s. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I think it's 135 tall or something. So it's pretty much close to the limit. And you can tell, guys, it turned out amazing. Just look at his face there. So there's a little bit of some kind of, you know, layering there, but it's not terrible. And overall, it just looks good. And his hair looks awesome. So just a great print. 
and our bottom here turned out all right also but i don't know if you guys can see it did warp just a little bit uh, i guess i didn't put enough glue probably there whenever i printed this because it's such a big area here you know it shrunk together and kind of picked up the ends but it's not bad and still ended up being an excellent print so as you can see guys i printed quite a few things already on this thing and everything turned out really good overall but this next item that i'm going to show you it just blew me away and that is this boat right here guys so this is just a normal boat that you can find on thingiverse and it has very complicated structures here to mimic you know some kind of testing but this printer just nailed it like it just tore this thing up like i am so impressed with this boat like look at the walls here guys i mean just pure amazing I don't know if this model is just designed so well or what, but it's absolutely perfect, almost in every way. You can see the flooring there inside, very nice. And now the parts that start to blow me away is once we get into the details. I mean, look at that ladder, look at that window, look at this gutter right here. And check out this little lamp thing right here, tower looking thing, that is amazing. I mean, that's some pretty tiny precision details there. And so as we go up here, we can see the, the top portion, and it's similarly amazing. I mean, it's hard to print between these spaces here and be all perfect every time. So as you can see, guys, this thing, it literally just nailed it. Like, this printer blew me away. When I, when I printed this thing, I was blown away. I just did not expect it to be this good, or not even close, honestly. I was thinking it was going to be a huge mess. I don't know, guys, if I can get any closer, but... Those details are just awesome. So yeah guys, so this basically, this boat right here just proves that this printer is capable of very fine detail and it can handle the overhangs. It can handle the precision that it takes to print something like this. So the next part I want to show you is look at the difference between the FlashForge Finder and the Solway here. That is a huge difference between two printers and the size of them. And the bed volume is still the same on both so you can see guys how compact this soway is and that's one of the things that's very lucrative about this printer you can easily set this up somewhere where it's not going to overwhelm your workspace you know compared to something like a flash force finder here so i just wanted to show you guys visually what the difference is and how you can appreciate the form factor of the soway all right so let's summarize what i really like about this printer and some of the things i don't so the things I like about it the most is the size. As you saw there guys, compared to the FlashForge Finder, this is a very nice size and you get the same bed. So that's a huge plus for it right there. The next thing that it does really good at is the print quality. As you can see, the print quality is excellent. So there's no doubt in my mind that this will satisfy pretty much anybody, especially if you're starting off printing. I also really like the interface. Even though it is a little bit cheesy, it does have all the functions you need to start printing and it's all right there and you just push it and go. There's not much clicking around or doing anything, you just do it. And that brings us to the full SD card here, which is very nice to have instead of fiddling with the little tiny mini micro SD cards. And the interface to get to your model is very easy also. So this printer having all the modern features of filament detection, resume print after power loss, makes this printer very competitive in the market. So as you can see guys, I'm very impressed with this thing and I really like it. Yeah, it does have downfalls. You know, like this, most of this body is all acrylic. Not too crazy about that, but you know, it all works together, which acrylic does very well in rigidity. So the printer is very stable in its design. It's like a really strong box. So I would say this printer appeals very well to somebody that doesn't want a huge printer, doesn't want to mess with upgrades because this printer does not need any upgrades. Can it benefit from upgrades? Maybe, probably could, but it, you can pretty much work with what you got here. I mean, you do need to get an ex external spool holder, but that's not that big of a deal. So. so overall, I'm having a great experience with this thing and I would still recommend this thing. All right guys, well, hopefully you enjoyed this little update video and all the prints here that we've printed and you like this video then hit that like button and if you're interested in a print like this then i'll leave some links in the description so check that out and also if you like videos like this and you're not subscribed then hit that subscribe button i do a lot of 3d printing videos and i got a lot more things to come so stay tuned and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace